Hi, I'm Adam in Wales and this is Board Game Wales Recommends, my series of reviews where I look only at excellent games, games I can wholeheartedly get behind, some of the best in my collection. And today I'm going to look at the game Abyss. Now Abyss didn't, uh, it was released a couple of years ago, it's, it's by Bruno Catala and uh, Charles Chevalier and illustrated by Xavier Collette beautifully illustrated, I might add. Now, it didn't immediately catch my attention. I mean, I was aware of it because it had this weird sort of looking cover. In fact, it had multiple covers. You could buy this box with lots of different types of faces on it. I don't know if anyone went to the effort of collecting all the different boxes, but it was a strange sort of marketing strategy. And it looks like such a thematic sort of fantasy style game. Very American style in its design. It looks like it's going to involve lots of fighting and stuff like that. Now, I had heard that that wasn't the case, that in fact this was much more like uh, something you would expect from Bruno Catala, uh, a Euro game, essentially a card hand management style game. But still, the theme was putting me off. Eventually, I picked it up in a trade. I played it. Oh, it's stunning. And I love the theme, actually. It works really, really well. But there is no fighting. In fact, th there's very little sort of story to it. It's, it's, it's the atmosphere, that underwater artwork. It's nice. Essentially, we could be building a castle. We could be building a, th a cathedral, the classic sort of Euro themes. But here we're underwater. And yeah, we're working in the courts and we're controlling lords and this sort of thing. But these are underwater lords. And so they just look a bit different. It's all very pretty. We're exchanging pearls instead of money. All of that doesn't really matter if the gameplay wasn't any good, but the gameplay is sublime. In Abyss, players accumulate points by defeating sea monsters, collecting jellyfish, crab, shell, seahorse and squid cards, but primarily by influencing powerful lords and controlling locations. On a player's turn, they take one action. They may explore the depths, revealing cards and selling them to their opponents or purchasing them for themselves. The currency here is pearls, and they're in short supply. Unpurchased cards move down into the council area, and the second action available to a player on their turn is to collect all cards in one part of the council for free. The final action available is using these cards to purchase a lord. These are worth points, but they also give you powerful rule-breaking abilities. These lords may also provide keys. When a player has three keys, they claim a location tile, which increases their scoring opportunities, but it reduces the lord's powers. The game ends when one player controls seven lords. The player with the most points wins. The Kraken expansion introduces a second currency, the Nebulous. These pearls are easy to collect and they're useful to have, but they're worth massive negative points at the game end. So you need to get rid of them. And this is sometimes easier said than done. The expansion also introduces wild cards called Kraken cards. These can count as any suit, so they're great for purchasing lords, but they also give you nebulous, so you need to tread carefully. The expansion also features new lords and locations, many of which focus around manipulating nebulous and Kraken cards. Each of those mechanisms in turn, in, on, on their own, would not necessarily make a fantastic game, but somehow the combinations of them and the way the Lords work and their special abilities being so sort of powerful and game-breaking, everything is sort of desirable in this game. You want to be doing stuff. There's loads of interaction. Every time you turn over a card, you've got to offer it up to the other players to buy first. When you add in the expansion, oh, it, it, just, it, it just becomes something fantastic. The, the, these illegal gems, the, the, these illegal pearls that you've got to get rid of, but you, you kind of, you, you're going to gather them and you kind of want to have them, but just not at the game end. Or maybe you could get away with them at the game end because they give you such an advantage. Maybe you can get far enough ahead that those negative points don't matter. Um, you don't have to have the expansion. It works very well without. And in fact, there's some parts of the expansion that I don't really use, but there's enough in that expansion that it just boosts the game. It's exactly the sort of expansion that I love. Now, I have had problems getting people to play this game because uh, the sort of players that I think would enjoy it, the players who usually enjoy a good old fashioned Euro game, they're turned off by the theme the same way that I was. I don't know whether that will have affected sales. I, well, I, I, I guess the fact it's getting expansion suggests that it's done well. Um, but those players, I'm having to convince them to play it. And then once they do, they're very happy to play again and again. On the other hand, I suspect that it does attract the more thematic gamers, the American style gamers, 
and then they may well be disappointed by the mechanisms which are essentially euro mechanisms. We're gathering cards, we're managing our hand and we're, we're, we're buying other cards until eventually the game ends at an arbitrary point and then we add up our victory points. Um, th th I, I should rave about the artwork a bit more. Xavier Collette has done a stunning job. Every card is a work of art. They're beautiful to look at. Some of them are quite sort of, um, you know, quite gore. Well, not gory, but they're not, they're not attractive sort of figures, but they're done so nicely. The colours and the, the styling in it, stunning, stunning game to look at. Now the rules to this game aren't the most intuitive in the world and there are things that you can forget, particularly when it comes to scoring and dealing with the uh, what are called the affiliated allies, that's the little seahorses, the shells, the jellyfish cards. Now they score in, in different ways, sometimes you're handling the sort of most powerful one of each particular suit or sometimes you're dealing with the least powerful of each particular suit and you're moving them down into your player area and at the end of the game some of the ones still left in your hand score and others don't. Now that can get a bit confusing and I have found that even when I've tried my best to explain it to players when we get to the end of the game I'm accused of well you didn't explain that and I, I kind of think I did explain it but people don't always get it. So it's not a, a, a super simple game, but once you get into the flow of it, 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 it goes very sort of quickly. Players don't take ages over their turns or anything like that. Um, there's a great degree of strategy in here, skillful European style you know, game fans. Those, those players will do very, very well at this game and they're always going to win if they're skillful at that sort of game. Um, it's, it's a game that relies on strategy and tactics but not, there's, there's not a huge degree of luck in it. Enough to keep it enticing, though. Um, I love this game. I think it's wonderful. I, I, I wouldn't recommend it to every player, and I think that the, the marketing decisions with this game were brave, but they're going to switch some people off from it. But if it sounds appealing to you, give it a go. Get yourself a copy. It's one of the best in my collection. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. I'm Adam in Wales. My YouTube channel is Adam's Board Game Wales. Please subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Board Game Wales or on Board Game Geek. I'm Adam78. Thank you very much for watching. All the best.